This is Michael Green. I'm going to show you some of the cool features and things you can do with Volumetic. Um, okay, so I'm going to add in using the Volumetric Tools add complex VM command a box, which you can see there, and that's basically the enclosing area of the volume that Volumetric is going to render. If I turn on VPR, you can see there's absolutely nothing there. That's because the opacity of the volume is zero when it first starts up. Um, this is the volumetic panel, and as you can see, when it's in solid mode, it's got a whole bunch of um, pretty much standard surface values. Um, you can have luminosity, diffuse, uh, shading softness, which is a new one. Let's give more sort of almost like a subsurface scattering effect on it to make it a bit more um, soft in terms of how it's lit. Uh, specularity, glossiness, color highlights for more metallic finishes and reflections. So if I just put the a gradient up, uh, this is the one we have to pay attention to the most at the moment, is the opacity. So if I put in a procedural texture like that, turbulence, you can see what we get is the turbulence rendered as a solid. Now, there's uh, some important things to note here. The opacity cutoff basically controls, um, because the um, turbulence goes from white to black, uh, the opacity cutoff determines where along that range it stops being solid and becomes transparent. It doesn't need that for the volume because volume represents a, a complete continuum of shades. Uh, you can see there, you know, parts of it are more opaque than others. Um, so if we go back to solid, I'll show you some fun stuff you can do with this. So we'll go back into the um, texture for the opacity. And rather than having it as a turbulent um, texture, we're going to go into the new node editor that comes with Lightwave 11. Just pop that up to 100 and open up the panel. Okay, so you've got your texture node input. Now I'm going to add in a gradient. Now if I plug in the gradient into there, you can see it disappears again because the gradient is black. So let's put a, a white in there, like that. And you can see now that part of it is drawn. If I just rotate the light a little bit, that way you can see the shading a bit better. So as I move this key up, you're decreasing and increasing the opacity. And if I move this one up, because it's being clipped like a pretty much like a clip map, as it gets darker, it's disappearing. Okay? That's because it's using the X coordinate if I switch to that the Z coordinate you can make it disappear that way and that way you can increase it make it thicker <coughs> but what I want to do excuse me is um, do something a bit more fun with that so let's just open up the node editor again and we're gonna try and make a sphere so a sphere mathematically is basically a distance from a certain point in 3D space. Um, everywhere that's on the sphere is at that distance from that center point. So if we add a item info node, and in this case we'll use the volumetic complex object which got added when we created the, um, the complex volumetic, uh, and then we're going to add in a spot node, which is here, now, spot node in this case, uh, whereas for displacement maps it is basically each vertex in the object, and for each um, point on a surface which is seen by the renderer uh, when you're doing using it in the um, render panel. Uh, in Volumetic, this is every point that is sampled. So if we find out the distance. Uh, using the maths vector distance node between
between the position of the object and the object spot in here and plug it into the input and then just edit the gradient we want, there we go, flip it out so the distance, where the distance is 0, i.e. at the centre of the object is white and then as it gets further out from that it uses white 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 up until it hits this key and then between this key and that key it goes from white which is opaque to black which is transparent so if we just pull this out a bit you can see that increases the size of the thing until it reaches the edge of the bounding box you can see just there that it's just at the edge of the bounding box so we'll just pull that in a little bit more so we've got a nice sphere like that and now I'm going to add in another gradient so if I just copy and paste now this one uh, I'm going to set up so that it uses the Z distance like we saw before um, so that we can cut through the object and we want it to start at say minus one um, uh, we've got it plugged in there so we want to just have a look uh, I'll just disconnect that for a second just so I can see where it's cutting through oh there we go so in this case I want it to be transparent at the front and slightly end of hake at the back so we can do uh, sort of a, a nice cut through so uh, we don't want it fully opaque at the back we want it to be only opaque in the bits where the other gradient was coming in so I'm going to select this gradient and make it show the output so that when we go back to the node editor you can now see that we've got key one key uh, color position and alpha so if we plug the output of that into this one oops you can see it's made it have the um, the colour of the ball there so I think I want it the other way around yes I want to show this one so let's show the output for that one and this one we don't want to be connected so we'll plug that into there and now you can see we've got a nice cut off there so uh, just fading it in a bit so what we can do is change that to a step change that value to a step and that value to a step you can see it cuts it very more much more finely there and I'll just pull it forward a bit so we get a bit more of the rounding but uh, more of the the sphere now if I go back to the go back to the texture editor we've only got two keys for the gradient that's giving us the circular effect if we add in another key in before that and set that to black which is of course transparent we get a hollow sphere not like in I don't know Star Trek or something which would be a, a holographic sphere we get a hollow sphere and we can pull the key about to make it thicker or thinner so it's all it's doing is taking the distance from there out to here which is this key here and then into the center which is this key here where it's solid and then out again to this key here where it's um, transparent again and that's what's giving us our sphere it's pretty cool but what we can also do is if we show the output of that of the inner key I'm going to add in another uh, texture say I don't know turbulence for example and we'll plug that into there and what that will do is give us the turbulence texture but only within 
that centre bit. Let me just change the size of it a bit. And now you can see you're getting a nice noise texture from the turbulence in the centre of the ball. Isn't that cool? It's something you couldn't do with polygons unless you were absolutely mental. And you'd have to do all sorts of booleans and things. Um, but here it's easy to set up. Um, so yeah, the, the turbulence is just going into the innermost keys color so that it's um, generating it just in the area where that um, that key has an effect for the distance. Okay. Uh, of course, if you want to get really funky, you might want to make it not a sphere. You might want to make it a different shape, for example. Um, we could make it bubbly, for example. So if we take the crumple, which is kind of a bubble texture, uh, and just reduce its frequencies so that it looks a bit more kind of bubbly, we're going to add in some more keys. So that's the innermost one. So we'll show the output of that one. And we'll show the output of that one. Uh, and then we'll add a constant node. Now this is going to be the radius of the sphere. So if we set that to say 0.5, which is more or less what this inner one is, that's 0.4, so it's a little bit further in. But we'll start off with it being that, and we'll just rename that radius. And now we're going to add this value, the this crumple texture, to the radius and push these keys out. So if you imagine, it's like um, everywhere that the uh, crumble texture is, it's going to be pushed out where it's white and pulled and, and left alone where it's black. So we don't want to perhaps, we want to control how much that's pulled out and pushed in. So we're just going to add a math node, go multiply, so we can scale that, um, how much that is. Uh, and we'll just set that to say 0.1, just to make it so it's not so quite so strong. Add node <coughs> math uh, add. Now we're going to add that node to there, and we'll plug that into the key three position. And you can see it's completely wiped it out. Now what's happening there is it's pushing the um, texture through itself, as it were, the sort of the the, the innermost rim through itself. So let's just add in a couple more adds. I'll plug that in there. I'll plug that into key position two. Which one's two? Okay, uh, that's one, that's two, that's three. So one is the outermost, two is the middle one. So if we set that to be 0.1, make it a bit smaller, 0.5, and then we'll add another one in. And then plug that into key position 1. You can see now it's doing that thing. It's a little bit big at the moment, so you can just see the edge of it as it's coming in here. So. We'll just decrease the radius a bit, like that, so you can start to see it's coming in a little bit now. And then these values are basically the wall thickness of the thing, so I'll just make those a little bit thinner. You can see it's got quite thin walls, it's still got the turbulence texture in the middle. But it's also got this uh, sort of crust, not crust, uh, crumple texture on the outside. 
and that's because what's happening is the crust texture is being added to that radius and so it's pushing the gradient out. That's pretty cool isn't it? And not something you could easily do in Modeler by modeling the actual surfaces. Um, or just switch the colors around so it looks a bit more bally like that. You can see the small and now you can see it's a very blobby structure uh, with a kind of uh, funky interior and that's the end of that tutorial um, I hope you've enjoyed it and I think, hope you found some new uses for nodes and uh, I'll speak to you soon